In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord our God, friend of the humble, who blessed your servant St. Andre Bosset with a great devotion to St. Joseph and a remarkable concern for the afflicted and the needy, grant that through his intercession we may follow his example of prayer and charity and so enter with him to behold the splendor of your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. My beloved people, who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. There are three that testify, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus was in one of the cities, there was a man covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Then Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and Jesus ordered him to tell no one. Go, he said, and show yourself to the priests. And as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing, for a testimony to them. But now more than ever, the word about Jesus spread abroad. Many crowds would gather to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. But he would withdraw to deserted places and pray. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. In the Bible, we see instances where people, after having encountered Jesus, had their names changed. Simon became Peter. 
Saul became Paul. When they have their name changed, it's not just change of name, it's a change of identity. Who he is and who he was, there was a huge change from a fisherman to becoming a follower of Christ. And as for Saul, someone who used to persecute the church to become the defender of the church. Whenever we see name changes, the whole person changes. If you, if you look at the lives of many people, saints, but not only the saints, but those who are uh, religious sisters or religious brothers, when they become religious, they sometimes take on the new name, meaning that they're leaving behind the person they used to be. St. Andrew was said was actually born as Alfred. Alfred became Andre when he became a religious brother. When he was born in August 9th of 1845, he was born as eighth child of uh, eight of 12. And in those days, uh, unfortunately, many, many babies died soon after birth. So uh, he lost four of his siblings. Um, only eight survived. And he was born in uh, St. Mont Saint Grégoire, which is four, 40 kilometers southeast of Montreal. He's lived, lived through some very, very, very challenging uh, circumstances. We know that his father Isaac died when he was nine years old from a work accident. His mother also died when he was 12. So he became an orphan. He needed to fend for himself. He ended up going to various places to fend for himself and he um, tried out many, many different trades from sin, uh, tinsmith to blacksmith uh, to a lumberjack and whatever it was, every time he tried it out, he got rejected. Why? Well, nowadays we can just use machines to, to process everything they were making. But in those days, you, you needed to lift things, you needed to cut things, you need to you know, use, use, your, use your strength to mold things. Unfortunately, he was too short, too weak, and too sickly. And therefore, nobody ever wanted to hire him. He would work for maybe a few days or a few weeks, and eventually he would get fired over and over again. But you would think someone who is going through a very, very challenging circumstances would almost fall into depression, but he didn't. The reason being is that he had such a tremendous faith. He would go to church and he would pray very often. And someone that was very impressed with Alfred is, was his pastor, Father Andre Provencal. And he recommended that uh, um, Brother Andre would become a religious. But even then, um, he tried out various congregations, but nobody ever wanted it because um, he actually hasn't gone to school, so he actually didn't know how to read or write. Um, and as a result, um, nobody wanted it. And even when the pastor wrote a beautiful letter to the congregation of the Holy Cross by saying, please accept him, I'm sending you a saint. Um, but despite that plea, it still got rejected. And, and, and um, the Archbishop of Montreal actually intervened. The, um, the Archbishop of Montreal intervened and, and therefore congregation of the Holy Cross uh, from Montreal decided to take him. But since Brother Andre was not strong enough to do any manual work um, and he didn't go to the school so he couldn't teach at the Notre Dame College um, where the Congregation of the Holy Cross Fathers were actually running the school and teaching uh, students. So they gave him a very, very, very simple job to do, to be a porter. But being a lowly porter, his job was just opening the door and closing, closing, the, closing the gate uh, for students and the parents and so forth. But people started to notice that miracles were happening around uh, Brother Andre. There are many, many instances and, and few that I know is um, that there was a boy who was in the infirmary and he was told to stay in the infirmary because he was sick. But then Brother Andre came and he said, well, why are you in here? And uh, the boy goes, well, I was told by the teachers to stay because I was sick. I have fever. And he goes, no, you don't have a fever. He, he touched him and, and prayed over him and he says, you're good to go. Go and, go and play. And then the teachers were upset that the boy was being very, very disobedient and said, we told you to stay. Who told you you can come out? Well, Brother Andre did. Well, you shouldn't be here because you're sick. And the boy said, well, I don't, I don't feel sick. 
and, uh, and they realized the fever had left them. And there's another instance of a, a doctor's wife. The doctor's wife uh, had uh, terminal illness and she was very, very sick. And as you can imagine, as the fame continued to spread, hundreds and hundreds of people came to see him every day. So the doctor's wife, who was actually very desperate, wanted to go and see uh, Brother Andre. So she stayed for hours to, to be able to see Brother Andre. And then as soon as, as, as uh, she was seen, um, Brother Andre, Andre said, well, you're, you're, you're doing fine. You, you can go home. And she was quite upset. And she protested and said, well, I can't believe you're saying that. I stayed outside feeling sick practically like all day waiting for you. And then you just look at me for a few seconds and says, I'm okay and go. Well, how dare you? He got very upset. She got very upset. She slammed the door. She was walking down the corridor. And then she realized, well, wait a minute, I'm feeling fine. So there are many, many of these instances. Uh, as more and more people came to see a Brother Andre, um, he felt it was necessary to be, be able to provide uh, spiritual food, spiritual nourishment for the people. So, so he asked whether or not a priest could be assigned to be able to celebrate Mass uh, and hear confessions for these pilgrims. But as, but, but as you can imagine, trying to run a school, um, you know, the, the Holy Congregation of the Holy Cross Fathers said, well, we don't have priests to give you. So eventually they decided that there was an, an elderly priest who was blind. And uh, so they said, well, you can have him. I'm not sure if he can celebrate Mass, but he could hear confessions. And Brother Andre was very, very, very happy. He said, perfect, we can have Mass tomorrow. He's going to be able to see, and he's, we're, we're going to be able to have Mass tomorrow. And sure enough, the following day, he regained his sight, and he could see, and he could celebrate Mass. So tremendous was the faith of St. Andrew Pesset. And such great was his humility that someone that's looked down upon as someone so insignificant, has gone to school, doesn't even know how to read or write, very, very sick, won't be able to do any of the need, these um, manual tasks. And yet, God used this imperfect tool, so to speak, to be able to manifest His power, healing power. We know all the documented um, uh, cases of people who actually were cured by uh, St. Andrew Bosset uh, are, are now counted about, about 10,000 cases. And I'm sure there are other people who are cured, but then they you know, um, did not let the congregation know. Um, so I'm sure it's actually more than 10,000. It's quite remarkable when he eventually died um, back in 1937. One million people came to funeral. You have to understand in those days, people didn't have cars, people didn't drive. They had to walk, they had to, um, you know, horses and, and, and car carriages and so forth. That's how one million people actually got there. And it happened to be very, very, very cold and snowy day. So people actually couldn't go up. So it was actually the fire department and ambulance and various, uh, you know, uh, emergency workers they came and, and people latched on to a fire truck. So it was a fire truck that transported people up and down, up and down for people to pay their last respect to St. Andre Bosset. Everybody loved him. And if you're thinking, why did everybody love him? Because Brother Andre truly loved everyone. Today, we celebrate his feast day. And let us pray that his faith and his complete trust in God which allowed God to do tremendous things through a humble servant, that with the same faith and same humility, we may allow God to accomplish great things in our life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. You'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed Bless be God. God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, by the example of St. Andre, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for your praise in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us, and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of St. Andre, who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was of service to your people through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.